ஓம் ஸ்ரீ சாய்ராம் தர்மவாயினி சாப்டர் சிக்ஸ் ப்ராக்டிஸ் தர்மா த பிரின்ஸிபல்ஸ் ஆஃப் தர்மா வில் நாட் சேஞ்ச் டு சூட் த கன்வீனியன்ஸ் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் தர்மா இஸ் இம்யூட்டபிள் தர்மா பெர்சிஸ்ட்ஸ் ஆஸ் தர்மா தென் நவ் அண்ட் ஃபார் அவர் அஃப்கோர்ஸ் த ப்ராக்டிசஸ் அண்ட் ரூல்ஸ் ஆஃப் அப்ளைடு dharma might change according to changing causes but even then the practices have to be tested on the basis of the scriptures shastras not on the basis of advantage there should be no such calculation the scriptures may not always support rules that yield tangible visible advantage nor can the vedas etc be expected to indicate only such acts dharma cannot be tested on those lines direct or ocular proofs is impossible mimakshas mimas mimaskas state that dharma can be known only through the vedic mantras and that the vedas attempt to elucidate only truths that are behind ocular demonstration if dharma is followed with an eye on the consequences it might even be neglected when the advantage is not patent or immediate everyone will not have the same motive or the same standard for example each will have a different idea of the fruits of bathing morning and evening prayers repetition of the name and meditation which are prescribed some people cancel repeating the gayatri in the evenings and instead recite the thousand names sahasranama of shiva or vishnu perform morning and evening prayers at the proper time kala sandhya samacharyate that is the prescription but in spite of such directions is it not a breach of dharma to cancel the evening prayers like this similarly there are prescriptions for every caste i created the four castes varnas dividing them on the basis of quality and activities chatur varnyam maya shriktam guna karma vibhagasya says the gita the meaning is quite clear that is the teaching but relying on all kinds of paltry arguments and dry reasonings many follow the dharma that appeals to them and without any fear of god or sin also drag the innocent and ignorant on the wrong path the protection of dharma the lord comes down now and then to uplift the down trodden and to reestablish dharma this is the reason for the incarnation of the lord as has been said in ringing tones in the gita i create myself for the establishment of dharma in every age dharma samasthapanaya sambhavami yuge yuge here one point has to be clearly grasped many who read the gita take it that the lord incarnates when dharma is destroyed and when the forces of adharma begin to prevail but there is there is no basis to draw the conclusion that dharma gets destroyed gita does not say so the word is used is diminish glani that is to say when the indications are that dharma is in danger i will come in order to protect dharma from harm he did not say that he will come down to protect it and preserve it after dharma has been destroyed of what use is a doctor after life has left so to after dharma the very life breath of humanity has been destroyed what is the need for the incarnation of the lord <coughs> bhavaroga vaidya what is the lord to protect this is why 
the word decline is used to indicate not the destruction but the decline and weakening of dharma the protection of dharma is the task of the lord for dharma is the very breath of the soul jeevi falling into adharma dharma is not an ordinary affair one who does not practice dharma is as bad as dead one who practices it is of the divine nature now there is need to turn people on to the dharmic path of by means of the traditional methods of good advice tempting them with the attractive consequences of following the path threatening to dissociate from those who don't and inflicting punishment as a last resort traditional methods of sama dhana veda and dhanda in ancient times people never gave up the practice of dharma even when threatened with death at the point of the sword now without even the slightest pressure from others people slide down and fall into adharma indeed dharma is interpreted in various confusing ways and those who strictly follow the real dharma are obstructed laughed at and treated as worse than dried up grass those who anxiously adhere to dharma are branded as cheats hypocrites and ignoramuses such calamitators don't know what dharma is and what its principles are unfortunate individuals they have no capacity to grasp the meaning of that word you can judge for yourself how dharma can be understood by people who do not know even the literal meaning of the word what can people born blind know of the sun or its rays of course they can feel the heat when the rays of the sun fall on their bodies but they can't have an idea of the nature of sun its form its shape its brilliance etc so to for a person who has no conception of dharma who has no faith in dharma the joy derived by its observance is incompressible to dilate on dharma before such people is as useless as as useless a venture as blowing a conch before people who are stone deaf they can only see the conch at the lips of the person blowing but they can't hear the least bit of sound so when dharma is taught to people or exalted care must be taken to see that they have the faith earnestness and eagerness to practice it only such must be handled and sought to be corrected later by the promptings of their own experience and the joy they derive therefrom even the ignorant will plant the seedlings of dharma in their hearts nowadays many educated persons immersed in vedic and spiritual shastric knowledge and classical scholarship have lost faith in the texts of which they are masters they have become afraid to stick firmly to dharma for it is laughed at by their cynical friends they have yielded to the crooked arguments of critics and sold their heritage for trivial returns they interpret the fast on the 11th day of the lunar month ekadashi as one of the means for regulating health the waving of the camphor flame as a remedy for asthmatics breathing exercises pranayama as helping digestion pilgrimages as educational tours and charity as a means of self advertisement thus demeaning and desecrating the holy junctions of injunctions of dharma such people only deceive the world they are barbarians who do not know or heed the principles of dharma they can learn something from a pursual of manus text on dharma anyone who wants to know dharma can know it only by following a system of logic tarka that is not opposed to veda and the scriptures <coughs> thus said manu no conclusion opposed to veda can be logical dry logic is profitless 
and Manu does not recommend it to those who want to study the Vedas, etc. Still, many today stick to this logical reasoning and follow a dharma themselves, dragging others with them into the wrong path. That is why Veda Vyasa declared along long ago, those who follow the path of casualism and logic seeking cause and effect connection will not offer sacrifices in the sacred fire but will involve themselves in low demeaning acts. Veda Vyasa said in this, said this Aranyopara of Mahabharata, Parva of Mahabharata while describing the conditions that are to be expected in this age, the Kali Yuga. Follow Dharma as do the elements. Only by following the path of Dharma or rectitude do the sun and moon evolve unerringly in their orbits. Only the call of Dharma makes all divine powers adhere to their various duties and responsibilities. Only Dharma keeps the five elements bound to the principles of their nature. You should derive the greatest possible benefit from Dharma and while following it, avoid causing any injury to the to yourself or others. You must spread the glory of Dharma by making yourself a shining example of the peace and joy it gives. Do not follow the trial of dry logic. Do not confuse your brain by cynicism and prejudices. Do not get interested in what others do or believe in and try to reform them or correct their footsteps. Have faith in the basic of Atma, which is your real truth. Test all lines of conduct on that basis, whether it will hinder the process of revealing the Atma or not. In the light of that faith and that test, carry on your daily duties and rich rites. Then you will never fall into error. You will also derive great joy. There are worldly maxim, maxims like being engaged in a profession is the sign of a human. Ujjogam Pursha Lakshanam or being engaged in a task is the sign of a human. Karmanam Pursha Lakshanam But the real maxim is observance of dharma is the sign of a human. Dharmam Pursha Lakshanam Everyone must engage in tasks infused with dharma while putting into action the four goals of human life. Pursha, Artha, Dharma, Pursha, Artha, Dharma, Wealth, Artha, Desire, Kama and Liberation, Moksha. Dharma for men. Just as faithfulness to the husband, Pativrata Dharma is for women, Celibacy, Brahmacharya is for men. Just as women should consider one person and one person only as her master and husband, man too has to be faithful to one human, woman and one woman only as his mate, his wife. She has to consider the husband as God and worship him and minister to and follow his desires for the fulfillment of her duty of loyalty to the husband, Pati Vrata. So too man should honor his wife as the mistress of the home and act in accordance with her wishes for she is the Lakshmi of the home, Graha Lakshmi. Then only can be deserved, can, on, can he deserve the status of man. Name and fame, honor and dishonor, vice and wickedness, good and bad are, are all equal and uniform for both men and women. There is no such thing as women alone being bound and men being free. Both are equally bound by the rules of dharma. Both will fall into a dharma if they behave without consideration of the claims of the four pairs of attributes. As mentioned above, men are bound in certain matters, just as women are. Uh, men have no right to do certain things. There are some important pledges between the husband and the wife. Jai Sairam.